Dwarven Moss presents a Dungeons and Dragons actual play of The Curse of Straw. <laughs> and we are back. So, after your rest, you've awoken at the Blood of the Vine Tavern. <sighs> now, as you kind of awaken, <coughs> The pores of your follicles are, are red and uncomfortably itchy. You guys are just kind of scratching all over the place. And uh, neither of you slept well because of this. But your HP has been restored. Uh, including the strength points, Boren, that you lost from those... That was drained by the shadows. Yes. How are you feeling, Boren? Uh, better, but not by much. How are you, friend? Same. I think I have enough strength to uh, get where we're going, but hey. I've seen better days. Myself as well. I seem to have gotten some of my strength back, but my skin feels like the edge of a rock. My skin? It's hey. all red and bumpy. Oh, God. It's like this whole place is poisoning me. How's, how's that bite of yours? Oh, God. I take, down, I take a look at it. How does it look? It's festering, all of that that red kind of itch. It's the same that's on your arms, uh, near this your is hairs. Deja vu, born. I remember waking up yesterday morning, See? looking at this festering wound. Uh, I also got this bloody thing on me. Let me take a look at that. Uh, this look. Oh, uh, uh, don't touch it. Yeah, it, no, it's fine. I think it actually looks a little better. Does it? No. Oh, because it doesn't feel. No, it, it's it's uh. It's looking okay. I think I think you're doing all right there. Uh, it's very kind of Wendell to kind of boost your confidence. Because Wendell's actually kind of looking around frantically right now. Where's BB? BB, BB, where'd you get off to? Oh, there you are. <laughs> kind of kind of crawls out from under the bed. He's been sleeping up on a. He made a little stack of, uh, you know, uh, the clothes that you took off and is kind of resting on. Born, come here. Take a look at this. Look down right over there. BB the dog yeah. made a little stack of my clothes. Oh, isn't that nice? Look at that. That's a smart fucking dog. It is a smart dog, but I'll tell what? you this, Wendell. I, I really don't think we should take that with us. What do you mean? It's a dog, my friend. We well, can have a dog trailing us around on this whole thing. <laughs> it's a dangerous road. You're going to protect okay, that Okay, wait thing? a second. We, let, let's all just uh, slow down a little bit here. BB is uh, obviously a... Shining light in this dark place, Bar. Oh, fair enough, but look, he's he's got to be not but two, three years old. This thing, it's still a wee pup. Yeah. And as you do this, uh, BB kind of he gets he's walking away from you and curling around uh, Wendell's leg and kind of looking up with his big doughy puppy dog eyes. I think BB can decide for herself. Come on, baby. Hey, let me take a look at this map. Boren pulls out the map. He just wants to get acquainted. Right, right there. Here we are. This is where we that's, came in. Yeah, that's, yeah. So basically you see that there's a path that kind of goes southwest, probably crosses some sort of river, and then there's some okay. forks along Crossing the way. Crossing some river and some forks along the way All here. Right. All right, if we keep going this way. And then there, that's where she said Madam e Eva, Eva is. And on this map are kind of these little hexagons, and the legend describes each kind of hexagon as being a quarter mile. So you do have some sort of idea of uh, how long it would take you to venture in whatever direction you decide. Quarter miles, all right. If we leave now, we'll be able to get there all by dusk. You can travel about three miles an hour at a regular pace. Oh. At a sped-up pace, you could do four but you might have disadvantage on perception because you're just moving so quickly. And you know how dangerous these uh, Svelich roads are. Okay, so Wendell's looking down at the map, and uh, he kind of steps back a bit, and he looks up at Bourne kind of with a, f a look of fear in his eye. Hey, uh, Bourne. Hey. I think we better be careful. I agree. So let's uh, start making our way down and walk down the stairs. As you walk down the stairs, you see Eric just being the drone, cleaning those glasses, and he kind of looks up to you guys and goes, Hey, I, uh, I put up signs for you guys uh, on your doors, room one and room two, with your names on them. Did you notice? I did. Thank you very much for that. 
I appreciate it. Well, you're kind of our number one customers right now, so I thought you'd enjoy the personal touch. Well, I do, but to tell you the truth, my friend, I'm not feeling myself lately. So if I'm not showing my positive side, then I apologize. I'll tell you right now, Eric, I don't give two fucks that you put my name on that door. All right. I hate this place. All right. Come on, Born. Look, before we go, Eric, hmm? do you mind if we get a couple of those pheasant omelets to go? Yeah, Wendell stops himself from leaving now. He stops near the door and he turns back. We could use some protein before we head out, my Yeah, friend. those uh, pheasant omelets were pretty good. Hey, I'm sorry about what I said, Eric. Uh, okay, well, don't sweat it. Uh, coming right up. Right. Do we see anything? Is there anybody else? And it's just us and Eric. So around that normal Eric, fireplace. Eric is certainly, uh, I would say, chilled out in the last hey, <laughs> good day or so. so. Eric has shown quite the hand of hospitality. Yeah. Well, you know, we have been showing our face more, so maybe <laughs> we're just more recognizable. He yeah. trusts <laughs> us now. Right. I think. Yeah, well, I'm not exactly ready to go around trusting every nice voice yeah. I hear. Yes, well, so we've learned. So we've learned. Well, Boren turns to Wendell and goes, Wendell, I think this is the plan. We go get Ilyana, possibly her brother Ismark. I believe her name is Irina. Irina, I, I'm sorry, my memory is not I know, what it used to you be. don't like this place. We go get Irina, her brother. His mark. I know it was their wish to get out of here. Uh, I think that <laughs> those people are just going to slow us down, Born. I think that mo just me, you, and BB should probably do the trick. I, I even think that dog is going to slow us down. <laughs> I look down at BB, share a, just a look of like, can you believe this guy? <laughs> well, look, she said that Strahd would not leave this place alone unless she left. And if my calculations are correct, this Madame Eva, if she can repair our wounds, she could possibly lift the curse of this young lady. And as, as Wendell uh, um, listens to this, more of the reality is setting in of all of this plot that he's involved in now. And it starts to weigh on him and he didn't really take his eyes off of BB, picking the dog up in his arms and sort of contemplating what you're saying, but petting BB with, he's sort of half there. Yeah, all right, yeah, we'll go help out. Irina and her brother and all that. Sure. <laughs> and Boren, what do you think, BB? Yeah. Boren knows, I mean, they're stuck. So he's like, look, we're stuck. We're not going to get out of this. We're not getting your gold. And it seems to me that we're not going to be as hasty as I thought I wanted us to be. So my plan is to follow along, because it seems like this place is built on favors and lies. So as long as we do those favors, we can skip past the lies and get home. Still looking at the dog, holding the dog in his arms, Wendell nods. Sure, sure, yeah. Do what, do what you want to do. I'm I'm going to be out of here and by the end of the day. Isn't that right, baby? End of the day, we're going to be out of here back home. At least back where things make a little more sense. And Boren's kind of just... He's kind of silently looking at Wendell, just thinking to himself. He's, he's, not, he's not as positive himself anymore. Right. It's almost he's, like you guys have switched. Yeah. And Wendell almost has these visions of him shepherding these fields with, with his new BB and he's back to his farm life. And you can kind of see that he's gone to like a new world just for like a little second as he kind of pets this yeah. new kind of therapy dog yeah. that he has. Yeah. And Born, he's just slightly shaking his head and just like in his mind, he's like, this fucking guy, what the hell? And he just yells to uh, Eric, Eric, Yeah, you can hold the omelet. Thank you for having us. And Boren hops off the stool and starts marching out. You sure? They're, they're almost ready. Boren's outside the tavern, putting his helmet on and tightening his straps on his glove. Kind of looking down, dismayed. Uh, as you gather a view of what's around you, you do see up north towards where the death house uh, once was and today is exceptionally kind of misty 
but as you look to where it is, it's almost like you see sort of a slow motion kind of cyclone or a typhoon. It's almost like a hurricane. You see a lot of movement towards that house where it once was. Right. Porn, that house disappeared, remember? And now look. Hey. What was that? Some sort of elemental damage left behind. I've never seen anything like that before. Fascinating. When you get closer, I will say this. You can see that planks of wood are reassembling. They're floating through the air mysteriously. The house is almost rebuilt. It's in first floor. And you can see that it's slowly reconstructing itself to its original form. By Moradin's beard, what am I seeing? <laughs> Wendell's just like hysterical, laughing, and laughing a little too hard. <laughs> Look at it! It's, the house is rebuilding itself, of course, right? Born! Born's Look. looking at Wendell just like. BB, BB, look! Even BB's probably backing up from him a little bit because he's just, he can't believe what he's seeing. Wow! Oh, now I've seen it all. It's like a reverse hurricane. The more things, items and, uh, you know, woods and irons and nails swirl around, it kind of. It's okay, you know what? Closer. I realize, Boren, Boren, it's all, it's okay. It's okay. We're dreaming. This is just a dream. This is not a dream, my yeah. friend. <laughs> Boren, look look at the house. It's building itself. Look. We were attacked by demons and shadows. Yes. I know I killed him. <laughs> look. Uh. It's not time for laughter. And I'm God forsaken. I, I'm not taking this dog with me any further. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on a second. There, I see. We should give them to that boy. Give them to that boy and that family. Let them take care of them. We can't keep trudging this animal along with us. Which way is Irina's place? Well, now it's south and southwest. So, Wendell. Um... Roll a perception. Or, sorry, a persuasion. Roll a persuasion and see if you can convince Wendell to... Release this like hound. Much. It's too much. There's something fucked up with this dog. This is a demon dog. Look. You said yourself you're falling under this blackness. You're laughing. You're not the man I once knew. Just take the dog and give it to we. I don't want to take anything from this place. Oh, Christ. <laughs> three three, plus, three five. plus. That's a solid eight. An eight, come on, boy. Wendell is in no way. I'm allergic. Look at my skin. Oh, I just don't pet it. As Wendell says over kind of his shoulder as he's walking towards Irina's place. So he just pretty much almost doesn't even lose step. I look like I'm strolling, like taking the dog out for a walk down these streets. I swear to Mordidin, I'm going to ruin it. And he just starts. I don't hear you. So you keep clip clopping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Past the same, same old thing. You're seeing these shuttered up, you know, half dilapidated Victorian Gothic style homes. You're cutting through. You know the town pretty well at this point. And, and the house is west. still building. We see in the background the house is still building itself. Still building itself. You even, you even see flashes of it where it's there, where it exists, almost like how you saw when it was falling apart. And then the image completely disappears and then comes back up. It's almost like a glitch. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like a, it's like a tear in re, in your reality that you see. Oh, and uh, but it's very real. The pieces of the house are very real. And it was just as real as when you when you entered the front door. So as you mosey along, kind of contemplating, you know, what the heck is happening to you, you do kind of reach the southernmost part of town, and you can see the Brigomaster's uh, mansion. 
So you keep going towards it. BB's scuttling by. I assume by. that Boren's like a few paces behind me, and we're, I'm a bit ahead of Boren unless he caught up. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you catch up? No, I, I'm just still, still kind of trailing behind. Yeah, you. we kind of we're almost a little bit at odds, I guess. We're yeah, a little bit behind, but I'm walking like just with a matter of factly towards the right. House. I know I know what it is. Uh, Wendell knows what it is that he what he wants to do. He wants to go and you know continue to play this game. Essentially, it's like yeah, it makes sense to him that we should go and remove Irina from her place where she keeps getting visited by Strahd because Strahd seems to be, according to all these people, the reason why there's so much evil and vampire shit happening. So yeah, as you guys continue on your journey, it, it is almost a very separate journey. You're all having your alone time in your own head. Wendell and BB are just like a team right now, powering ahead. You're about 30 feet behind. And you're really down in your luck. You guys have shifted almost. You know, you're becoming the darker one. And Wendell's, it's not really clear that he's happy, but he's hysterical and out of it. And he's almost decided that I'm just going to, I'm just going to be a mad person because I don't have that kind of sadness if I choose that path. He's going to give in to the, the madness. Yeah, the he's kind of let of this, go. Uh, yeah. He has let go. So as he walks up, he gives a little uh, knock, knock, knock on the door. You hear a voice, a woman's voice, the voice of Irina. Hello, hello. Who, who is there? Uh, Irina, it's uh, Wendell and Boren. Uh, we're the ones that buried your father a few nights ago. I believe it's time for us to leave the village. Pack your things. Let's get going. Uh, g yes. Yeah, good idea. Uh, give me five minutes. And you kind of hear a click, 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 click. She opens the door up. The place is just as you saw it once before, kind of falling apart. Uh, no one else is there. All you see is Irina kind of scuttling upstairs and grabbing some things. There's no Ismark. He's not there. Her brother's Ismark not there. Ismark is not there right now. All right. Hey, where is your brother, Irina? Well, he has some things to attend to. Uh, n now that the mayor is deceased, uh, we're looking for someone to take over. Yeah, yeah. Who would want to take over this place? Oh, hey, Born, come on. Uh, yeah, get your shit and let's go, let's, God. Uh, we got. It's kind of a time crunch here, Arena. Come on, chop, chop. To your surprise, she kind of she comes down the stairs, and as you know, she is gorgeous. But she is this... Not to me, though. Remember. Not to you, right? Yeah. Not to the dwarf. Beautiful human women. Mm. Are just you can imagine if she was ugly. very, very short, a little bit fatter, mm. with the same features, how attractive she might be. Okay, okay. Oh, Wendell you? notices how attractive she is, but he's kind of in no... He's an old man. He's, he yeah. kind of looks... It's more of like a uh, must-be-nice sort of uh, <laughs> attitude. And she comes down uh, dressed... And she's wearing scale mail, very noble build, build, and she has a short sword. And all of a sudden, she just looks like she means business. And uh, it's just very surprising to you to see Irina in this light. And she's kind of got her hair tied up in a ponytail. And as she comes down, she says, well, I'm ready. Let's get out of here. Hey, aye, that's some impressive armor, girl. Where'd you get that new? It's all in the family. I've trained, uh, you know, with this armor my whole life. Really, eh? And Wendell kind of looks beyond her. What else is in the family? Let me check my father's chest. Here, c come upstairs with me. And just in the master bedroom, at the foot of the bed, there's this chest that's clearly kind of been in the family for a long while and she scutters to the side opens up a desk and pulls out this key and gives it a little bit of click and then she looks at you guys she goes oh there must be something in here that we can use on a journey she kind of clicks it open and roll for a magic item oh. table b oh. let's see what we got here i think it's going to be a uh, oh nice Two. Just describe how you rolled that. That was a fun way to roll it for two people. Chris has got the 100 die, and I got the 10 die. And we roll them together. I landed on 50. Jay landed on 2. Put them together, 52. Two people can roll. 52. For that sweet magic item. 
So as she digs through the bottom, she finds this vial, uh, kind of in between a vial and a potion. It's not exactly a lot of liquid, but there's a decent amount of it. Whoa. And... Wait, Irina, what is that? This. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yes, my father's only had this for quite some time. This, drinking this potion, can allow you to breathe underwater. But we just came up here like you knew about this. You knew you had this, like, and we just came to get it. So you, do you know if we're, we are going underwater or we might be going hey, underwater? Hey, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Look, we're I'm just wondering, Boren. I asked her anything that can help us, and she beelined it to an underwater breathing potion. I wasn't sure what was in the chest. But oh. I think, oh, okay. All right. But I think this potion could help you. And I'm, in, and I'm going to take a look around the room, too. Can I roll a perception? Mm-hmm. Oh, just three. You're just tossing shit over. So as you're tossing stuff over. Boren's just standing she's there. kind of giving you a look. Uh, she look, looks over at Boren. Hey, my, what is wrong with your friend? Hey, you know what? He's a bit of an asshole. I apologize. BB, you find any potions? Any healing potions? <laughs> Go get it. He's sniffing around. <laughs> kind of following your lead. Grabbing things, shaking them in his teeth. Kind of tearing up the place in his own little way. <laughs> like father, like son. He's incorrigible. <laughs> Look, Wendell, I've got to ask, please. If it's about the dog, you can save it. Please. As he's walking. <laughs> no, he's and walking I, away from you. He, okay, I Wendell walks away, and I grab him by the arm. I just grab him like big, thick, dwarven hand and go, Look, I'm serious about that dog meat. I don't want it with us. And I'm almost intimidating him now. Well, roll if you're almost. I don't Actually want, intimidate. I don't want to look at that thing anymore. If I think we can give them away, let's give them away. 13 plus 5 is 18. So the tensions are really, really high right now. Um, oh. Wendell has kind of trashed the room. Uh, Irina is a little uncomfortable. Born has grabbed Wendell by the arm. Jesus, Born, take it easy, man. And it demanded that he gets rid of this dog. Okay, just, all right, we'll figure something out with the dog, okay? Best to give the dog to a family that needs it. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Just just let go of my arm, Born. You're hurting my arm. Born lets go of his arm and just turns around, walks out of the room. Let's go. Walks downstairs. Irina's close behind. She's kind of being the space in between you two guys. And uh, she's a little distracting for Wendell in a positive way as she walks down the stairs. So she gathers her last uh, bits, her, her bag. She slings over a backpack over her, uh, over her armor. And you guys head out the door. She makes sure everything's kind of triple locked. She actually writes a little note for her brother uh, in the corner. And while she's penning this note... Uh, does anything happen? I'm on the road and I conjure, I use fine steed and I oh. conjure my Zoltan, awesome. my war boar, because I know we're going to be war traveling, boar. right? War He still looks like a fleshy beast and it kind of gives a little bit of sadness to uh, you. Yeah, I, but he looks like a, like a zo- zombie almost, It's like right? a zombie boar at this But he's point. still usable, he's still... Completely usable, he's there. Just looks gross. It's the only thing that's different about him is his appearance. Yeah, just... and I go and I just put my hand on I'm sorry, my boy. And I started loading my battle axe, and there's obvious there are these obvious uh, slots in his uh, saddle where all my armor goes. Love it. And I take my shield up. Ugh. There are little things you're seeing. I'm pulling out like a handle. I pull out from the top. I can pull it out and I hook it onto the. Wow. Thing. I'm gonna actually sleight of hand put BB in my backpack and close it. <laughs> Ooh, nice. <laughs> While he's getting ready, while Born is getting ready. Yeah, that's. I'm gonna give you advantage on that because he's summoning a boar. Oh yeah. He is going nuts. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Plus. Um, plus three. Seventeen. Ooh. Yeah. I think you're you're able to. Not only are you able to put this uh, dog in your backpack without being seen, you're almost able to like communicate with the dog and and BB understands. It's almost like. Right, sh- keep keep quiet, <laughs> baby. I don't think Born. I think Born's a little. Doggist, I guess. Caninist. And then Born turns think, around. I don't think Born likes dogs. Wendell! Do we've got a horse for you? 
Uh, well, I guess. <laughs> Irina, you want to go with Born, I guess. You're just. Uh, you went right up to the boar. <laughs> she's petting it as if she's. Wow, really, you're taking a real liking really to it. She loves this boar. And then she snaps out of it, too, and looks over at you and says, Well, we could get us some horses. We could visit uh, we could visit Vildraith at the Mercantile well, Exchange. Well, lead the way, Irina. What are we doing, standing out here in the mist? Do we really want to go back to Vildraith? You almost killed the man. Oh, that's right. And I take Boys, a look down at my axe. It's it's a little bloody, but it's okay. you've seen it much cleaner. That uh, that last fight from last night, oh. that kept... that That's got... Hey, and I kind of just look at Bourne like he mm. knows... Right, like, and I show you're just him. showing it to him. I'm showing at it to this him. Point. It's good, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Boren's right? almost like, oh, thank God, he's not going to snap and go crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. So, Boren, I think we'll be fine going to see Bill Dre. All right, fine. And I mean, it just goes, boys, let me do the talking. So she marches ahead, flicks her hair, marches ahead, goes to Mercantile Exchange. You guys are kind of waiting outside. Um, you can wait no longer than two minutes, and she actually comes around the side. Uh, with a horse. Where's the other one? I was only able to get us one. Well, looks like you two are going to have to share a horse. I was thinking I could maybe share the boar. She just grabs uh, some fur of the boar, oh, hops right <laughs> on, hey, uh, puts her arms around you. Oh, oh, Missy, just straddles so you. Tight. Really, really tight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna heave myself up onto the horse. Been on one of these before. Say, hey, Wendell, did you get rid of that dog yet or what? Yeah, actually, uh, I, uh, I sort of got, I, I told it to go and fetch and threw something really far. Good. All right. If there isn't anything else, I say we get going. Find this Madame Eva. Right. Here we go. <laughs> So you head out towards the Svelich Road, which cuts right through Barovia. You guys are marching by. Mist is surrounding you, and you travel south for about one hour, covering three miles of ground. And for the first time in a while, you see something different, and you can hear a river flowing. It's known as the River Ivlis, and the river flows as clear as the blue winter sky through the valley. As you approach these arching stone bridge, which spans the river, is roughly 50 feet wide. As you get closer, you can see that the depth of the river is approximately, probably five to 10 feet at its deepest. And you guys kind of just hold up right before you cross the bridge. Irina, uh, why are we stopped here? This is not safe. Oh, I haven't left Barovia for such a long time. But this is the River Iblis. And I thought we could at least stop and say goodbye to the past. She hops off the boar. I look at me and the boar and look at each other. She crawls near to the edge of the bridge and gets down on one knee. With her head in her fist, she, her eyes are closed. Boar doesn't say anything but just slips off his saddle, grabs his, tors, his, his boar's tusk and just lands and joins her beside her and he goes down and he starts to pray. Wendell is just confused beyond all belief, just almost like a WTF face. <laughs> uh, hey, guys. I'm looking around. He finally be free to find the way to well, am I missing something? What is it about stone bridges that makes you want to talk to the divine? I might remind you, Born, that we're bitten by werewolves. We've got wounds. Irene looks up. Oh, Wendell. Please, give us a moment. Oh, sure, yeah. Please, take many moments. Take more moments. Oh, my God, I'm going to be dead soon anyway. So Irina reaches out her hand, and she grabs Boren's hand. 
And she says, I thank you for your prayers and your divinity. And may the Holy Spirits guide you and you stay positive in these dark times. Okay. Thank you, Les. This, this place has been a, a dark cloak weighing heavy on me. And you're right. Time to say goodbye to the past. We hold on to the past like bricks that weigh us down. But if we let go, we can move forward at a better pace. Thank you. And may the divine keep you. They both step back up, stretching. She hops back on the boar. And they're ready to cross the bridge. And now, once you've crossed the bridge, you've kind of entered a really tight zone. It's not so much as, it's not as open as it once was. As you go by, you do hit a crossroads. There's an old wooden gallows that creaks in a chill wind that blows down from the high ground to the west. A frayed length of rope dances from this beam. The well-worn road splits here, and a signpost opposite to the gallows points off in these directions. Barovia Village to the east, Sir Pool to the northwest, and Ravenloft and Velaki to the southeast. Now when you see the name Velaki, Irina speaks up and says, Yes, this is where we must go. Velaki, there's no Vistani, no Strahd, nothing. This is this is the town of hope. This is this is where I would feel safe. All right, not too hasty now, girl. We have our own quest. Yeah, yeah there's a couple stops we gotta make on the way. First and foremost, we've all been bitten by something. I take my I take my wound right out and I show the side. I'm bearing a lot of my side ass, and I just show her. Look at this, Irina. We gotta get this figured out. We're going to see Madame Eva. That's what's happening. And Boren sees that, and then he pulls down his collar on his armor and goes, Look, I share the same bites as you, girl. I say we go to Madame Eva. No, I insist we visit this old woman. Unless this is on the way to your Valaki village. Sir Poole is on the way to Valaki. Yes, we, we will stop there first. We'll, we'll see Adam, Madame Eva. Well... Then I think we are in good luck then. Right, fine, good. Come! You hear a creaking noise behind you. Wait a minute! Coming from those gallows that you saw, Irina all of a sudden screams. <coughs> and as you turn around, where there was nothing before, now hangs a lifeless body. A body of Irina. Oh my god. Give born, a born a look of like a cocked eyebrow. And now you're eyebrow, hearing like, these howls louder and louder. Oh my god! It sounds like many of them. You've heard them before. I would say they're maybe two or three turns away. My friends, I suggest we don't dilly dally. Away! You guys are going fast and fast. As you look behind you, you can see these these wolves jump out of the forest. They are pacing you as much as they can. It's wolves born! Wolves you see them! Keep going! As you're running and running and running, you've kept up a decent speed. They can't really seem to catch up, but as you see, you look to the left as these trees are just spinning past you in a blur. You do see this very, very large dire wolf, a white wolf, galloping easily ahead of you and almost kind of watching you taunting you, knowing that you could easily catch up. Hey, well, he watching is. the whole scene. Boren's holding onto the reins of his boar, just keeping straight eye contact with this wolf. Not doing it any sort of just looking at him. What the hell is this? Boren! Boren! Hold on! And as you kind of, bo- as both of you lock eyes with this thing, it almost does go into a slow motion type, like time does stand still, and you feel a tingling on the back of your head, and all of a sudden you hear a voice, Tationa, my 
love. How dare you take her away from me, Tatiana? And then things kind of pick up that back again. You guys are cutting. Crazy. Stepping on twigs, going through there. All of a sudden, Wendell feels like he's in a safe space. He feels like he's 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 got the speed. He's he's locked in. He's darting forward ahead. He's almost leaving you in the dust. Right now, it's you, Zoltan, uh, and Irina. Warren. And these wolves are slowly catching up. What do you want to do? What I'll do is take off the front of my boot, and as I look, you know, as we're riding down, it's like yeah. Mad Max style, you know what I mean? Things are just whipping by, and I'm looking for the right moment to just whip this thing so it catches on a rock and just kind of sends it flying. So the rock and the dust and the debris kind of cause some smoke screen behind me. And I can Very use cool. that as an impulse run Very cool. to get away from Very cool. So wolves. as Irina's just gripping onto you with <laughs> all her might, you're, you have one hand on Zoltan. And you're trying to direct him the best you can. Yeah. All you can do, what you can do as you free up your left hand, you just kind of grab at, your, at the plate, at your own plate mail on your leg, and you rip off this metal chunk, and you kind of whip it behind as you look by back uh, briefly at these wolves. Uh, all right, roll for it. All right, oh, okay. Oh! Yikes. I got a six. Plus what, though? Plus, what did we say, eight? Okay, so 14. Okay. Oh, yeah. God damn! <laughs> so the piece of plate that you ripped off of your own leg and threw at these wolves actually hits. And it bounces off the ground no. and hits this wolf kind of in the tooth and it gives a little <laughs> but <laughs> and he's wincing, but it's pretty much dead shit. It, oh. But they're still they haven't really lost their pace. Yeah. All they know is that somehow there's a new element involved yeah, where they fun. may have to dodge things in the future. All right, all right. And Wendell is still jolted way ahead of you. I'm gonna cast a minor illusion. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna make an illusion of them kind of like fallen or like uh, stopped as if they've given up and I start moving my hands and I go and I kind of send out a little bit of a black smoky uh, sandy thing and, makes and that kind of corresponds with Boren's action of throwing his plate mail and causing this big dust smoke and Irina thing. is with you guys Irina kind of grips on to his arm to Boren's arm and lays down to the ground and she's dragging her short sword across the ground doing like zigzags <laughs> creating kind of like a dust s a smoke screen and it this is a very badass move Boren's holding on to it with all his oh, yeah. strength with this big meaty yeah. he's gone from your from your hips to your yeah. arm and she's just and like ragging it up she picked up so what these wolves are seeing is almost a, a hurt uh uh, Boren and, and and Zoltan is kind of slowing up and pulling off to the side awesome. as if he's kind of completely out of juice. Yeah. I'm gonna do uh, uh, an intelligence check right here. So that's a definite fail. Uh, the leader is is slobbering and he kind of jolts off to the right to kind of bounce on this tired prey, this perceived tired prey that Wendell has created this illusion. Yeah. And he's jumping at it. He almost hurts himself as he kind of falls through it. But all of his, uh, all of the rest of the pack join in. And they're completely dismayed as they see this dust cloud. And you guys are jetting off. And as you're doing this, that dire wolf to the left is still easily keeping up with you. You see these fiery red eyes looking at you guys. And it almost kind of, as you guys are pacing down this road it almost slows down like kind of at a perfect speed like a very intentional speed and as you see as you look back you see its final connection as it looks to both of you in the eyes and then all of a sudden the red eyes fade and you see its back turn away and slowly walk towards the werewolves that were chasing you just follow the river born exactly you guys are following the river and you guys finally feel comfortable for the first time to kind of slow up your pace a little bit. Oh, no. Oh, so as you, as you make your way up north, the road gradually disappears and is replaced by a twisted, muddy path through the trees. Deep ruts in the earth are evidence of the comings and goings of wagons. 
There's a clearing here, next to a river that widens to form a small lake several hundred feet across. Five colorful round tents, each ten feet in diameter, are pitched outside a ring of four barrel-topped wagons. A much larger tent stands near the shore of the lake, its sagging form lit from within. The mournful strains of an accordion clash with the singing of several brightly clad figures around a bonfire. I think I've heard this before, Born. I think this is uh, the Bastani. It is the Vistani indeed. They're in a state of, well, celebration. They certainly do like their wine, if you hadn't picked up on that before. And all of a sudden, this kind of uh, intoxicated, semi-intoxicated Vistani stumbles towards you guys as he sees you guys approaching. Well, who are these friends we have coming up here? (laughs) Hello, my my friend. My name is Borin. I have more of a paladin in the Bright Axe Hall. He stumbles back and brings attention to kind of the uh, the elder that's there. I think he's getting their attention, Borm. Maybe uh, hey. Stendemir is here. And we have a few <laughs> words to share with him. Absolutely. I think I've gotten my goal back again, friend. That little chase did it for me. The end is near, as in of this place, and we're going to go home. Right. Get to get a Barovia. That was a good thing. Gentlemen, I am uh, Shabaro, the elder of these Vistani. Yes, yes. Well, we have matters that need tending to post haste, my friend. We are looking for a Madame Eva. Well, that's her tent right there. As he says that, Boren sort of takes a moment to himself and just looks around. And he looks at the, the firelight and the lamplight and the people and the moonlight. Wendell's doing the same thing. And he's just letting it soak in. He's actually taking a moment to almost exhale, almost just like feel better. Same with Wendell. And he looks at Boren and shares like a look of like, <sighs> Boren walks right up to Wendell and grabs him by the arm and he looks him dead in the eye. Thank you, friend. You're Thank welcome. Thank you for making me feel safe. You are welcome. And you know what, Boren? And you see this, this tear starts to trickle down his cheek. Boren is, as much as he's a man of the military, he's also, he wears his heart on his sleeve. And this is a very big, safe moment where he goes, I trust you, friend. And I thank you for all the support you've given me. What's that noise? Wendell's starting to kind of hit his backpack a bit. Oh, no. One of those weird ones. No, 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 no. What are those weird ones? It's close. B- B- Born, Born, and he puts a hand on Born. Born, I think you need to smoke some dwarven moss with me right now because I, we just, this is a place of calm, right? Dwarven moss, you're right. We're, gonna, we're about to see Madame Eva. She's right. going to take us home. This is a celebration, Born. So as you guys are, are passing along this dwarven moss, Irina is spinning in her boots. and Yeah, Born goes, Irina, how are you? Thank you so much for your help back there. She looks over and goes, well, what is that moss all about? Pass it my way. Hey. You want to hit this, Irina? Irina. I'd, I'd like to give it a try. You must light it on fire and inhale its smoke essence. This is from my people. Ages and ages. <coughs> <coughs> the people of Bright Axe. Oh, my word. <coughs> hey. <laughs> I know. When I first had the dwarven moss, it's I was kind of blown away. These short little... Oh, I, sorry. Uh, <coughs> These stout, strong Thank you. people have very stout and strong moss. It has helped mm. us get over th- certain things, <sighs> like glycoma. Some of us suffer from bulimia or anorexia. Dwarves? Hi. <laughs> really? It's a problem in... Uh, so I don't mean to laugh. I, I'm no, not really at all. Sorry. I mean, it must be very new to you, but even dwarves suffer from mental stress of life and living just above the underdark. To be quite honest, guys, if I can just be honest, because we're at the end of our adventure here and we're about to go home and I'm really stoked about it. (laughs) Um, I heard a voice in my head and this wolf called me Tatiana. I heard the same thing. What? Strahd has called me Tatiana. 
Several times. I, it's all coming back to me now. It's so jumbled. Ah, uh, oh, I was talking to you. Mm. No, I get it now. He must think you're someone else. That's why he wants to keep you around. Oh, Born, don't you understand? That dire wolf was Strahd. My he word. must be able to take other forms. Of course. A shapeshifter. Right. This is dangerous. I feel like we're safe now. We must make sure to keep an eye out. For Strahd travels with some ill company. Werewolves or other monsters. Fell beasts that I do not wish to face. I don't wish to face them either. Irina, Born, let's go see Madame Eva, get these wounds looked at, Aye. and then go the fuck home. And you guys walking towards the tent. So, wow. going into the tent. As you approach the tent, magic flames cast a reddish glow over the interior of this tent. Whoa! Revealing a low table covered in a black velvet cloth. Hey, no, what's this? Glints of light seem to flash. <laughs> okay. Glints of light <laughs> seem to flash from a crystal ball on the table as a hunched figure peers into its depths. As the crone speaks, her voice crackles like dry weeds. Well, at last, you have arrived. Oh, for I've been waiting for you. Welcome, Wendell, Borin, and Irina. So glad you have found each other. Please, come inside and don't be shy. Pleasure to make your acquaintance finally, Madame Eva. And Borin gets down on one knee. He lowers his head. I am Admiral Paladin Borin Hardinus from Brightax Hall. Wendell's jaw is on the floor. Borin feels quite at home. He goes up, he says, Thank you so much for your hospitality, Madame Eva. We've heard much about you and would really like to get down to brass tacks, if you don't mind my saying. I'm not so warm myself with my introduction. I find myself lost in this world, whatever world that is, and I'm bitten on my ass. We're trying to find you, Madame Eva. We have well, questions. You've come to the right place. Well, what is it, Wendell? You have questions you seek? It looks like you've hurt yourself. Yeah, and I've heard that you're just the person to to cure us. What is this place? Is Wendell sort of looking around at the interior of the tent. What does the interior of this tent look like? It looks very uh, rich. Uh, the candlelight that illuminates it gives it like a very golden glow. A lot of the tapestries are velvety, and uh, it just looks like a very classy uh, tent. And you can see that it's mixed with like wood, and there's a nice mahogany table. And Ooh, look at the table, Wendell. Come on, you can trust the woman. That's yeah. a fine make. It's yeah, a pretty it, nice table, I guess. Oh yeah, that's that's where she's got her crystal ball, kind of hunched ball over on there too. There's gems laid out, strewn across, and. Uh, beads and jewelry. My word. Please, madame, we have traveled very far to see you. We were told by many other Vistani that you could give us the answers that we've been looking for. Yeah, and a cure for this wound on my ass. I, Wendell's already got pretty much his pants off. Like, he's, he's, he's pulled his robe aside and he's revealing a big... I share the same injuries, plus this on my neck. And ah. Irina, Irina kind of shows the same thing. And I've got, I've got the same marks as him. Please, we were told that you could help us. We met three Vistani women in the Blood of the Vine Tavern in Borovia. Plus, we met a gentleman outside, outside of these lands, near a town called Degafort. I believe you might know him. His name is Stanomir. Well, I am the true seer of Barovia, the clairvoyant of the land, and it's been this way for hundreds of years. If you'd like to have a seat, perhaps I can teach you something about your future, about your prophecy. Yeah, Wendell's like trusting this hardcore, like he's, he's down on both knees, like, like you're a god or something. Me too. Boren's taken off his glove. He, he looks to 
Irina, come girl, follow. This is the we. And she's kind of, she's on your lead. Great. You guys are in the, the center. Uh, right now, Irina is directly across from Madame Eva. You're creating some sort of triangle or a square of some sorts. And all of a sudden, the, the madam starts muttering kind of ohms, like a oh, mm, Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And as she's doing this, her eyes roll back in her head, flickering, and there's just whiteness. Mm, and just as things are kind of coming to a crescendo, this one eye kind of pops out like a beady eye. And it just starts eyeing you guys. One person to an each, this little black dot kind of going across the room. And his eye is almost popped out of her head. And it's really intense and she's shaking oh, really, oh. really, really badly. I think that's a good thing, Born. Um, and Eva, you're right. You're, Eva. Eva, you're kind of squeezing you're my right. hand. Ah. She's squeezing very hard. Whoa, Born. Even Boren's going, I, Oh my it's god, so what is this? Oh, yeah, it's probably at? just part of the effect. Oh, Brian second. kind of pops back in, rolls back, and she covers her hands over her eyes. Ugh. And all of a sudden starts breathing heavily. <sighs> oh, dearie. Her eyes roll back, and you guys feel this energy uh, flow through your body. And all of a sudden, <laughs> you can actually see the wounds starting to close themselves, and you can Ooh. see the hair uh, recessing back into around your cuts. Oh. And it's oh. relieved. Oh. You feel like a, like a cool aloe being rub, rubbed all over oh. your body. My, oh. Born, my ass feels so good. Oh, my neck feels amazing. Feel my neck. Look at this. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, that's so smooth. Oh. Here, here. Feel my ass. Oh, yeah. See, that's where the wound check was. Out, check out my feel, wound feel yeah, my neck. Right there. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, I, I had and I take, I look at her. Born and just I, crying like he's I crying face her. so happy. I am an accepting, <laughs> loving individual. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I shake her hand. I shake her hand. And, and I look now at I her. shake her hand like a. Like and really I get down seriously. on my, I get down on my knee and I, and Boren just goes, by the beard of Mother, thank you. Thank you. I bless thee. And I will yeah. never forget yeah. the favor that you've done. My friend's going to bless you right now. By the people oh. and all the people of Bright Axe yeah. Hall, you are now divinity yeah, and divine. A great sense of, uh, of of positivity washes over Wendell, and he just puts both of his arms around Irina and Bourne, and he looks at them like it's like the end of the movie. And he goes, "Well, guys, it was pretty crazy, but yeah. we've made it. We're cured." And, <laughs> oh, oh, and he looks up at yeah. Madame Eva. Madame Eva, thank you. We'd like to go home now. Uh, thank you, Madame Eva. So, <laughs> and he's what Bourne's wiping tears away. Let's talk about getting. Like, out out of this. Hold on, yes. We must find out what is going on first, Madam Eva. Yeah, Eva, what is going on? Like, we we were brought we have here so by many a questions. Oh, yeah, Boris, you please. take it. I have some questions too. Oh, oh well, look. let me. Uh, first and foremost, yeah, we met three Vistani women in the Blood of the Vine Tavern in Barovia. Plus, we met a gentleman outside, outside of these lands, near a town called Dagafort. I believe you might know him. His name is Stenomir. He talked of an old soldier, a soldier that was wounded in war, that offered you free travel throughout his lands. Was it Strahd? I am beholden to this land. Stenomir and the Vistani woman. Yes, I know them. Their actions are only here to serve one person. Aye. One person only. Strahd. Yes, the Dark Prince. The Dark Prince that Stanimir told you about. We agreed to help Stanimir do something like help this man. That's right. But I'm not too thrilled about obliging Stanimir anymore. And the Strahd fella, well, he spooked me right out. You cannot be judgmental of Stanimir, of yourselves, of myself, of the Vistani, really? or anything else in this land. Uh huh. We are not in control. The only way to gain control is to relieve Strahd of his curse. You cannot go home. 
you are stuck here forever in Strahd's mind, in Strahd's dream, in Strahd's nightmare. No, 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 I'm not staying here. No, 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 I'm not Wendell. staying here. Wendell, I'm pacing hold around. On, my boy. Wendell takes a look at his axe. As he pulls it out, he takes a little glint, and it's looking pretty clean, but as I have a closer look, there are there are still some like bloody fingerprints on it. Oh it's it's very close, but the, there's I would okay. say there's just bloody fingerprints on it, about five or six. I'm gonna look up at Born. Born, are you tell me that this isn't true? That we're not just joining the civilization of trapped, strawed prisoners here. Look, Wendell, we're stuck here, boy. You yourself wanted to come on this mission because you believed it would get you some more gold, didn't you? Wendell's looking at a wall right now, away from Bourne. This was your doing, boy. You agreed to the circumstances. You were the one who wanted to advance on this mission. You were the one that was so gung-ho on getting rid of these strangers. We're trapped here. We've gone through a lot. But if we keep our wits about us, we know what this man is now. We know what we have to do. Our main goal is to lift this curse. That's how we get home. Wendell flips around and he looks at Bourne. He's, he's, tear, he's teared up. Yeah. You see that dire wolf? You see how it slowed itself running by us in that mist it's like the god of this fucking place you want to just go and take care of them it must be nice having that sort of confidence but me I'm an old man born just a farmer I know but you've proven yourself out there Friend, you fought more than some soldiers that I've trained. You know your way around you. And you know your binding to this curse. You know the pros, but you're also aware of the cons. You're using that smarts for you, boy. You may be just a farmer on the outside, but you're a fighter on the inside. If you want to get home, I feel we have to lift this curse. Wendell steps up to Madame Eva very, very close to the face, like like two inches from her face. I've had <laughs> enough uh, kooky talk from you. I'd suggest pointing us in the quickest direction home. And I'll thank you for your healing powers, but I want nothing to do with this place or straw or whatever your problems are. Come on, Born. Where do we go, Madame Eva? Well, you see, you three have already found each other. This is part of a prophecy, and I can teach you more about it. I can help you put straw to rest and free him of his curse. But you stand no chance alone without aid of some sort. So please... Pay attention and gather around. And just as she says that, she slowly reaches under the table and she pulls out this uh, wooden box that's covered in a black velvet cloth and she swipes the cloth off. Uh, within the box, you can see this aged deck of cards, uh, these black cards, and uh, she begins to shuffle them. Wendell looks at Bourne in the eyes and a little fear ripples over his eyeballs. And and he looks down at the cards. And he ponders inquisitively and listens. All right. What are you talking about? So she, so she does a similar thing where she's her eyes roll back in her head. And you, you can just see the whiteness of her eyes. And she has her hands laid on the cards, and she's just shuffling them with one hand and seeing, you know, the different configurations in which they appear. 
And uh, as soon as she feels that they're shuffled, she stops and she lays them out, five cards in a diamond type configuration. One at the top, followed by two, three, four, a row of three, and the last card. These cards will speak to you directly and tell you truths but they are only your truths. You must find out how to reveal them and learn for yourself. So she moves her hand around, flips up a card. Ah, yes. The first card is the card of the charlatan. This card tells of history, knowledge of the ancient, and it will help you better understand your enemy. What I see in this card shows a lonely mill on a precipice, and there's a treasure that lies within. And just as she says this, Irina speaks. Uh, I, I know of this place. It's, it's on the way to Valaki. Yes. It's, it's along the, the, old Svelik no, uh, the old Svelik road up north. This must be, this must be what she's talking about. Ah, oh, perfect. See, Wendell? And a smile grows on Boren's face, and he's, you know, he's lightly punching Wendell's side. Come on. Right? There you go. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> okay. And he kind of <clears throat> hits a little ticklish spot of Wendell's side. Don't oh, stop it. All right. There all right, you keep go. Going. Come on. <laughs> Things are all right. So Madam Eva <laughs> gives uh, Irene, Irene uh, like, a, like a knowing glance, like, yes, that is the mill. You know of this. She moves over to the second card. She <gasps> okay. flips it. She says, this card is the holy symbol of raven kind. It tells of a powerful force for good and protection, a holy symbol of great hope. And she holds up a card, and it's a picture of this tax collector. And then she mentions, uh, it's the Vistani that have what you seek. It's a missing child holds the key to the treasure's release. And when she says this, her head, her, her whole face goes pale, and she gets kind of sickly. And... Whoa. She doesn't really have any but other damn. way to say this, but... Uh, Is Riddle making you ill, or what's going on? Well, uh, this second card, the tax collector, I foresee it ending in a battle, a battle of two sides, and one side will completely perish, and that is the only way it will end if you seek oh, out this holy God. symbol. My word. She shakes it off. She feels a little bit better. And she takes a deep breath. Oh, she pulls out this next card. You'll see this is the missionary. And when she looks at it, she says, I see a garden dusted with snow, watched over by a scarecrow with a sackcloth grin. Look not to the garden, but to the guardian. This third card reveals an incredibly powerful weapon. So keep an eye out for... The scarecrow dusted with snow. She goes Aye. around. Two cards left. She flips the fourth card. This card is the card of the mists. This card sheds light on one who will help you greatly in the battle against darkness. A Vistana wanders this land alone, searching for her mentor. She does not stay in one place for long. But if you find this woman, she may be of service to you, an ally of sorts. Hey, all right, you hear that, Wendell? Yeah, I hear it. This won't be easy, but we have allies in this land. There is something to trust. Well, I'm glad you're taking this so well, Born. Now on to the fifth and final card. And as she goes to flip it, she actually just stops and she looks at you guys and smiles. And without touching the card, it flips over itself. Holy! That, I'm sorry, but that was. Did not expect that. Warren, you gotta be kidding me. You just had these Thank wounds you, completely that. magically seal up in front of your very eyes, your skin I, melded I, together. I, you know, the card flips I over. I was looking and at her hands. 
Well, this final card is called the Innocent. And it speaks of your enemy. Your enemy is a creature of darkness whose powers are beyond mortality. And this card will lead you to him. And as she says that, the card stands up and it starts doing all these 360s. Whoa, and and then figure eights. And it, and it gets really what? close to like Wendell's face, almost hitting Whoa. him in the eye. It's nothing. Come on, this is early. Parlor tricks. No, no. Then it lights up, and then all these sparks come off of it. Oh, my God. Oh, it's hovering, and it's spinning. And then as the card is flat, a <gasps> figure comes up to it. It is the Queen of Hearts, the Innocent. And you can see her, and she's uh, addressing the land, and it's the most beautiful uh, 3D rendering you've ever seen in your life. This is beautiful. And as the card hovers back to the ground, almost like this uh, queen of hearts, this innocent is almost riding a, uh, like a like a carpet or something, like a magical... <gasps> uh, seems to really platform. drag on in its end part here. <laughs> Instead of Madame Eva speaking, the, the queen of hearts speaks. And she wow. looks at you, Wendell, and says, He dwells with the one whose blood sealed his doom. A brother of light, snuffed out too soon. Puff of smoke, card disappears. Oh! Oh, and Boring claps. He's just on his feet clapping. Hey, what? And uh, yeah, just as that happens, Madame Eva's uh, head just hits the table. Get water! We need some water! Go, boy! Uh, Madame Eva collapses. Yeah, Boring puts his hand and goes, lay on hands, and then he just casts lay on hands. By the beard of Moradin. (laughs) You will take my power. I am level six. Six <laughs> times five, that's 30. I replenish 30 hit points. <laughs> so as this holy hand kind of grips her back, yeah. and just enervates her with this, this, this HP fulfilling her, invigor- yeah. invigorating her. Yeah. She feels the love. She feels the joy. And she kind of, gla- you know, shakes herself out of it. Wendell shakes a random Vistani outside near the fire. I need water! My friend's calling for water! What do you mean? I, uh, I take, I take it. I start running. I run into the tent. Or in here! Where, where are you? <laughs> so you rush in. She takes a big swig of this uh, this water. I go, uh, oh, div- divining takes a lot out of me. Uh, I've yes. grown weary. Please, please. Take your time. Calm yourself. I believe you have all the information you need. Tonight I must rest. Yes. If you wish to do the same, there are three tents that you can see just as you exit. Thank you. And I will do my best. And he lays her down on her bedroll and puts a blanket over her. And her eyes kind of roll back, and she looks actually peaceful. She looks very angelic as she rests her old body along the bedroll, along the ground. And Borin is on a knee, and he says a quick prayer for her. May the strength of Moradin's axe stay by your side. And he does a little motion, and he gets up, and he starts putting on his gauntlets. And Boren motions to Irina and Wendell, and all three of them slip out of the tent quietly. And Irina snuggles up in this bedroll in the first tent that you guys approach, and she's kind of stripping off her armor, putting her sword by her side within reach, and she's getting comfy, and she's getting ready to go to bed. It's basically you two right now. Irina is out cold. Yeah, she's out cold in her hand. Our tents have been made up. Okay, no, lit up by the fire. Lit up by the fire. Wendell's looking off. He's look, just looking at the fire, trying to take it all in. <sighs> Wendell, I know this is a lot to take in for a farmer, but if we want to get out of here, I suggest that we follow these five premonitions by Madame Eva. Born. I, I'm a farmer on the outside. But I'm a fighter on the inside. inside. There's my boy. Yeah, we grab, we... We just clasp hands like yeah. Predator. 
the beginning of Predator. Yes. <laughs> and we're Man. back. We're like, it's the beginning, like the first day. We were just back. Hey, boy. And, Let's and give him a fight to remember. I'm, I'm going to go to bed, Born. Yeah, hey, uh, all right. So Born goes to the lake. He fills his helmet filled with water. He pours it on the fire. He's watched his friend Wendell turn in for the night. Good night, Born. Good night, my friend. We shall see you in the morning, if there is one. He slowly looks in at Irina. And he kind of tiptoes up to her as she sleeps. So then he takes her blanket, tucks her in a bit, and walks back to his own tent. Starts to take all his stuff off, like the military man he is, and puts it down. And he takes out this little drawing of his wife. And he looks at it. And then he just perches it on his boot. And he lies down on his bedroll just staring at this little drawing, this charcoal drawing of his wife and then slowly falls asleep.